Welcome back. I'm Barry Craig. If you've been following the news, you know that newspapers are having a hard time. Uh, nationwide subscription numbers are down, readership is down, papers are closing, papers are cutting back. But my guests today have started a newspaper in these turbulent times. They are Ivan and Mary Potter from Clinton in Hickman County. Welcome to the program. Thank you, Mary. Hi, I have a copy in my lap of the Mississippi River Journal, which we assume covers the counties of Ballard, Carlisle, Hickman, and Fulton. And the most obvious question is, given the background, <laughs> what in the world possessed you all to launch such an apparently risky venture? Mary and I come from a background of uh, being heavily involved with politics issues, uh, studying and events. <clears throat> we moved to West Kentucky um, some years ago and in the process found out that the area you mentioned, Hickman, Carlisle, Fulton, Ballard, were a bit more remote, isolated from the major driver issues of the day. You know, it's funny. We call them the river counties, yet every county in the purchase except Graves touches a river. Exactly. Yes. Exactly. Yes. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, so I started about a year and a half ago to think about the transition that was coming. I've been watching this for a long time. And I decided that uh, the weekly newspapers would not go away, that they've been there for 100 years. That the legacy newspapers, that Mary called them, uh, the Courier Journal, the Paducah Suns, the Lexington Heralds, were going to be in serious trouble because the dynamics of how we receive news was already beginning to be felt. Um, cell phones, iPods, computer, internet. Many people were getting their news from that and not from the newspapers. So I sat down for three months and did a master plan. It carries us out five years. And we're in the two years of that master plan. And what I looked at was impact of the internet, what was happening out here. Uh, Mary was going to Frankfurt. Uh, they'd asked her to, to help with a special session or a general session up general there. General session. So those three months she was gone, I had a lot of time to work day and night. And what I came up with the internet is a driver, uh, it's where most of people are getting in news in certain categories, under 30. Those under 40, sort of mixed. Those over 50, we're getting it from local newspapers, print only. And the closer I looked at it, and then I went and reviewed all the bloggers in the state. I came up with 98 of them. That were I was going to ask how many there were. 98. And it was basically a 40, 40, 20. 40% 40 were to the hard right, about equal number to the hard left. It was all about he says, she said, he bitch, she bitch, all the time, back and forth. And I looked at that spectrum in between. That was Lexington Herald, Courier Journal. The better reporters who had their own sites, they did general news coverage. So it taught me that there was a vacuum out here in West Paducah because the only persons that had a chance to produce news was Paducah Sun. And they had a particular philosophical bent that I did not agree with. So we established the West Kentucky Journal of Politics and Issues as a counterweight to, to the Paducah Sun. Now that's online. That it's is online. online only. Mary came back, took it over full time. I'm proud to say that she has now had over a million hits on that site in under a year. So we feel very good about that. You know, talking about that, I'm 59 years old. And, and this internet stuff is still kind of mystical to me. Uh, and of course, I always we always say that that's what a 15 year old son is for he does the computer stuff for dad the whole thing about blogs getting back to that bluegrass report really kicked this yeah, off yes, in Kentucky. Yes. when you said a million hits yes. i think they got two or three and i they thought did. in kentucky yeah. exactly yeah. bluegrass reports uh was a first independent effort to challenge the entire media structure of the state they would break a story that was pretty hard-hitting they did a lot of investigative journalism which we've gotten away from in Kentucky in the past 10 years. The bigger news bureaus and newspapers could not put the money or support staff to dig for the stories. And they would deny that breaking story for a long time. And then after a week or a month, they would pick it up themselves oh, and absolutely. then publish it. Yeah. It got to be so embarrassing for them, they even stopped doing that. And so Bluegrass Reports was part of the granddaddy of everything we're talking about. But it got so internalized that it, it started to pick fights. And it crossed the line there for a while. And then, the, uh, the developer left the state. Right, he's in Montana now. Right. Mm -hmm. So a vacuum created, and then that's where we started to come in and several other good sites. Well, as Mary 
undertook to do the West Kentucky uh, Journal of Politics and Issues. I developed with some other partners here, Anita Bug over in Battle County, Michael Toon in Carlisle County, and some investors. This approach to doing a news journal, we model along a USA Today format. Bright, airy stories, short, most of them, uh, where the average reader in our area, it's not time sensitive, it's about the people in the area. Mm -hmm. So therefore the journal name, and we chose the Four Rivers, the Mississippi River as our principal focus. Now, print because okay. most of our population, they need to feel it. Uh, but we're developing an online site that goes with it, it's called MissRiverJoe.com. Yeah, I saw it at the top. Uh, and yeah. that's going to be for those people who want to do more entertaining, uh, more, I guess, faster interpretation news. All this was aimed towards February 17th convergence that's going to happen next month. When With you, you the TV thing. Right. Right, right. Within two years, we hope to use this medium here to publish our newspaper so that when you walk into your home at, at, at night and you have a long day, the technology will allow you as voice recognition to access your TV and say, bring up Miss River Joe, it'll be there. It'll have the news that we're putting in. So we cross over medium from print, from internet, to convergence of television. So that's, that's where we're heading. Mm -hmm. and that's amazing. All, all that to build two things in West Kentucky. Progressive thought and a community that's online, that goes past distance. Your grandfather had a newspaper in the morning, and, and they, they, their world was national. It was a, a America, and they lived in usually big cities. My father came out of the war in 47 or 45. Their world was of suburbs, so it became community, their focus. I am at the tail end of the boomer, or beginning of the boomer generation, and the people behind me, it's all about the power of self. So as being an individual with tremendous technology power, it's not tied to a city or a region anymore. It's, it's global in its instance, and they're building new tribes. These are young people with interests. They're building communities that go beyond our physical dimension of community. So what we're trying to do here, Mary especially, because she's a better writer than I am. I type with two fingers. I can't spell. <coughs> and I drive spell check crazy. And Mary is done so such a job with the West Kentucky Journal, we, we're trying to build all this on a 32 county platform, a progressive moment. I think, I think part of it is our definition of web blogs. You know, when we talk about blogs, I think of somebody doing a journal online, a this is what I think of things. Can you define a blog? I, I, to me, that, that's, I have a hard time getting a grip on what a blog well, is. Well, uh, originally a web blog was a person who went online to write their own account a Just personal journal on the internet. A web log got shortened to blog. And, you know, we had some wonderful blogs early in the Iraq War. There were bloggers coming out of mm -hmm. Iraq mm -hmm. telling their stories that weren't getting told mm -hmm. anywhere else. I don't, <coughs> see, I don't see what we do as a, as a blog. Mm -hmm. um, and I try not to get testy when we're called a blog because I do a certain mm -hmm. amount of opinion writing. Mm -hmm. But, you know, we've done, we've done a whole series on the laws that were coming out of Frankfurt. We've done a whole series on casinos. And you're an attorney, right? And I'm an attorney. Yeah, right. um, and, and analyzing legislation is actually what I did in the last legislature. Mm -hmm. So I do a lot of, of analysis uh, with some opinions. I've started doing some cartoons. And I think we're moving more toward an online newspaper uh, than we are moving back toward a personal blog. There is a real place for blogs. I mean, we get a lot of news out of blogs. And don't you all link to other blogs? Oh, yes. 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 Uh, yes. Of course. And we get, we get readers, uh, I think our biggest link is to page one. We get a lot of readers out of Louisville who will pick us up from page one in Louisville because that's the newest, trendiest blog, frankly, in the state of Kentucky. Page one. Page one, Kentucky. If you have not read it, it's, it's very snappy and um, very sharp. And we get lots of, and we have a link on their site and we get lots of readers from their site, especially when we do something that they mention. Right. Uh, so, you know, it is a community. It's a community I, I've never met. A lot of the bloggers, I had, didn't meet Mark Nicholas. We knew Mark Nicholas. Right. Uh, but 
You know, the important thing is people are moving away from paper as their main source of information. But in West Kentucky, as Mark Twain said, I want to be here when the world ends because it's going to take us 10 years uh, to exactly, find out about exactly. it. So yeah. whatever's happening yeah. way out there. And, and is, I think one of the things too is fascinating is that you all are doing this from Clinton, which yes. is not exactly a major metropolitan <laughs> area. It's not even a major metropolitan area of, of Western uh, Kentucky. Well, it's funny. I grew up in Barberville, which is as far from Clinton as you can get almost and still be in the state of Kentucky, right. population 3,500. Right. And I said when I left Barberville dusting my heels that I would never live in a town the size of Barberville yeah. again. Well, I live in Clinton, which is the third the size yeah, of, of the course. city of Barberville. Of so. We have one stoplight uh, in the town. Uh, the town is uh, 1,200. And a county that's just under 5,000. Um, we used to have a bookstore, uh, and I called USA Today to try to get a, a rack for them to put their newspapers in front. It took me a week to get up to the vice president of operations, and he said, We're sorry, but we cannot do that. You're one of the seven places in the United States that we cannot guarantee daily circulation. Uh, we are up there with frontier status. St. Louis comes into your just north of here, Paducah, mm -hmm. uh, Bob Evans, I think, has got them. Curry Journal comes in here. Uh, the Memphis uh, papers stop at the Tennessee border. Uh, so we're in this little bubble that's cut off from the big world. You are. And, and, and you know, you're talking about, about big city dailies. Uh, my dad, being from Knoxville, is a big UT football yes. fan, and he always took the commercial appeal mm -hmm. for the UT sports. And so we got the commercial appeal home delivered in Mayfield, where I live. Yes. Yeah. I believe the Nashville, Tennessee at one time, you could get right. it home yeah. delivered here. None of these big city dailies are being home delivered. Even the Courier Journal. I, I can't get it home delivered in, no. in Mayfield either. No, when we can't get the Paducah Sun home delivered in Clinton. I, I have a friend who has a dog that used to go out and get the paper when it was thrown out who's a very confused, unhappy puppy because mm -hmm. It's right. no longer but but, but I mean, this is the national trend. They're pulling themselves right. in, and these rural areas are going to be left we're, out. We're, yeah, when, we're I did my, when I did my research, uh, I anticipated this, but not happening for another five to seven years. The speed of what's happening is even surprising to me, and I'm used to speed and, and events collapsing fast. And it all came to me last week when I read that the New York Times, the New York Times could cease operations this May, that they're in such a bad shape with their debt, they just built a, uh, a new uh, building about $640 million debt structure on top of another $400 million. They, got a, they have a billion dollar note to meet in May. Much like what Paducah's got, they have a, a large note to meet too. Legacy newspapers have had too much building, too much real estate, too much staff and equipment to move fast in this new age. What we're doing is coming up from the bottom. We're, we're very lean, we're very structured, we know where our market is. And those pe newspapers that do form now are going to be a combination of online and print uh, and focus on their, their geography. Where we are in Clinton, Hickman County, which touches the Mississippi River, if you go from there, head east towards Madisonville and Owensboro, I think the Christian Monitor newspaper uh, about a month ago, and they did a complete survey of all the counties in America. We were dubbed bedroom, uh, was it bedroom or? Empty nest. Empty nest. Empty nest where we had a population that was leaving and no population coming in. It's almost the exact same 12 counties that Mitch McConnell has a secret power base for, <laughs> for conservative voting. So those kind of things will break up soon because at some point uh, enough population will leave that it becomes attractive that new population from outside will come in with progressive ideas and buy up their real estate. Now, this will happen in a few years. Do you think that the, the internet overtook newspapers faster than they thought it would. Yeah. Yes. Uh, yeah, yes. definitely. Yes, yes. Definitely. And and the the problem is with the advertising model. You can't get enough money out of an advertising to support an IT staff. And when they tried to, to go that direction, they found out that their costs outran their internet site. So Newspapers make money off of advertising. I mean, your oh, absolutely. subscription is... You could almost give them away. Well, and he does. I don't know if he said that. Mississippi River Journal is free. Right. Except mm -hmm. to advertisers who advertise. Now, when them. I was in the newspaper business, I, I was didn't know anything, and I, and I thought the money was your subscribers. I had no idea. No. It's your advertisers. It's, it's yeah. eyeballs on the page. Yes. Yeah, well, eyeballs on the page. Our model is that we had to brand this product in under 18 months. That meant we had to have a circulation base 
that we are strong enough to go to any advertiser in this area and say, guaranteed this is how many eyeballs will see your product in a given time. So we came out and the first thing we did was to mail them into homes, 10,000 circulation, 20,000 eyeballs. So it becomes day one a force to be reckoned with in terms of the advertising dollar in Jackson Purchase. But that's a model that no one else wants to do. I mean, our readers get that product free. Our advertisers know that that reader is looking at their ads. So ours is a platform to bring the two people together. Mm -hmm. That's an interesting concept. Um, we were in London last summer, and they have these free papers they give out. That one was called the City Paper, and the other I forget. But you come off the, the underground, and they're handing these things yeah. out free yes. daily newspapers. And I think the Village Voice is free, Village isn't Voice, it? Yes. In so, New York. I, it? So that's a concept it's, that, yeah. that, that, that it, it's out there. And um, these papers were, well, they're obviously thriving enough to where that they're, uh, they're putting them out um, uh, every day. But I, I guess that's, you go back, you think, no, you have to sell a newspaper. You have to get at least a quarter uh, for it, you know. Uh, but what you do here and what we're doing is content. Content drives everything. I can see another two years, maybe, you could have a podcast. And I guess you're in an educational system you can't take money in, but somebody could actually advertise on you. And somebody could pull a Blackberry up or an Apple phone and say, okay, I'm watching the show in my hand. It's going to go that way. I know, which is just beyond my powers to comprehend. That's why you need a 15-year-old. That's right. That's uh, right. right. I was taught uh, a taste of humility uh, last week. I met with a senior and junior class at Hickman County High on an uh, environmental project they're working on for a story. And I was trying to explain to them where the Internet came from and cell phone. They understood the Internet, but uh, when I talked to, them, talked to them about cell phone coming out of Star Trek, no one in the room knew what Star Trek right. was. Exactly. And I had yeah. explained it, and I had this mental image of, I am so old now. I mean, I'm so far out of it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. These kids are into a different dimension. It, it, it's, it's phenomenal, and, and, and I guess the thing that amazes, well, when we were kids, there was no concept of a personal computer that I was aware of. And, and now, um, it's just, it's, it's incredible. And, of course, the thing about, about cell phones, being an old reporter myself, is that can turn an individual into a reporter. You turn up and, and the, now the picture obviously is not going to be as good as if you use a, a camera. But still, it, it, it's, it's phenomenal. And I remember the, uh, uh, well, the bombing in the, in, the, in the underground in London, they were taking pictures of that with their cell phones from the, the carriages yes. in there. Which is, is phenomenal about it. Everyone can become a journalist. Everybody way. can become a journalist. And I have to tell you, that is very intimidating to public mm -hmm. officials. <clears throat> Recently, yes. I talked to some folks in Frankfurt who are very unhappy about people being able to post their opinion online anonymously about a public official. Uh, one county attorney, or one Commonwealth attorney up in Franklin County, dared anyone who had a negative opinion mm -hmm. of him to come to his office and confront him. And that's everybody becomes a reporter everybody becomes important mm -hmm. and that's going to change the face of our democracy well it, it, it already has I mean the fact that what, what a role in the internet uh, plays in campaigns the, the cracks in this area as Mary's talking about are so huge now as the last election when you had a, a sitting incumbent congressman be challenged by someone totally new to the system ran a campaign with less than forty thousand dollars and had a respectable vote return one of the lessons I've learned in the last campaign, the consultants no longer deal with print. It is either television or the internet. They mm -hmm. will not put a dollar into print. So all those newspapers thinking they were going to be a windfall in the election found out quickly that it's not uh, there that's, anymore. That's got to be hurting too. It's yeah. got to be hurting. And yeah. this year we have no elections. Mm -hmm. So there's going to be no election advertising mm -hmm. at all for anybody. So if you have a, a chain with TV, radio, that's an that's a, a income stream that you will no longer have, and that's not And, and on candidate advertising, isn't that cash up front? Yes. Absolutely. I was going to say, well, Absolutely. So, so you're talking guaranteed yeah. You're money. not. Guaranteed yeah, you're not carrying yeah. them by law. They have to pay I you when they place right. the ad. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and that's a, that's a uh, uh, well, again, it, it, it's fascinating to me, of course, growing up in old-fashioned print journalism uh, and, and this, this, this whole idea of, well, now, who publishes? Do the nuts and bolts of how it's published. It's published out of state because they offer the best rate. Uh, there's only so they truck them in here and then you all... No, we go get them. You go get them. 
Well, now who distributes it? Uh, you're going from, from Ballard to Fulton County. Who? Uh, we do. You do. There's, there's actually three newspapers, three groups involved. So the Ballard County people take care of Ballard County. The Carlisle County take care of Carlisle. Ivan fills in the blanks with everything Part else. of what I did was put together a flow chart. I'm, I'm an old geographer, so I have to think in special regions. There's 118 steps to this paper hitting someone like you at home. From the time we pull the trigger and say commit to the time it's into that mailbox. Uh, three phases. There's the design, there's this, and, and advertising and production, and then there's another phase that we're playing with, and that's dis distribution. It's easy because we're in partnership with the post office. You, you come to them, you get a permit, uh, they give you a special rate if you do all the work, which means you bundle it, uh, you put them in the bags, you take it from post office to post office. Otherwise, any step above that where they have to put manpower to it, the price goes through the roof. Mm -hmm. So we come in at a really good price rate. We have a good print rate. I mean, we did a lot of serious looking at who could print within a 100 mile radius and make it worthwhile for our time. And we found all that components. If you're really serious, you can find this. The key factor is content. By having enough stories coming in every issue that people want to kick back and read. Now you're a weekly, right? Bi-weekly, every, bi every two weeks. Every two, every two weeks. weeks. But the, day, uh, the internet will be every day. Right. Uh, we, we and that's another thing too about internet is, is, is you, and I have, and I'm like everyone else now, I mean, I'm really high tech. I, I go to my internet sites, my, my baseball, my football, my sports sites, my mm -hmm. news sites, whatever. And, uh, but you want to make sure that that's updated. Yeah. And if it's not, it makes you mad. Yeah. Uh, exactly. It does. It, exactly. it really does. And I have guilt when I don't update my site daily. And of course, I'm a working attorney and I have to fit that in among my, my day but job. But if you can do that, you'll get the hits. People yeah. want to go back. And I think that's the thing about Bluegrass Report. I used to hit that thing four or five times yeah. a day because exactly. it would change during the day. Right. And that's the problem with it, though. Mark couldn't make a living at it. Right. I mean, basically, he could not get the advertisers to pay him to stay home, to keep it updated for well, you, you know, and a me fellow, every day. A fellow from Hopkinsville tried to resurrect that, but it went it nowhere. Just, yeah. it, it just stopped. And I, uh, I, I still have a bookmark, but it hasn't yeah. moved since it, all this stuff. The, the intensity and the resource you had to bring personally to that kind of site, it is an all day, all night kind of oh, it'd compulsion. Be. Yeah, it'd be, like a, it'd be like a big newspaper. Back to the nuts and bolts for a second. Right. Uh, we had a meeting among all the people involved, and the question was coming down to how many pages? It's designed for 32 pages. That, that's where we think the maximum return is. We're at 16 right now, and we're bumping up to towards 20. And I was pushing for an editorial page. I really felt strong about an editorial page. Competing against me was the, the page on food recipes. Well, I lost out. You mm -hmm. can see who won. <laughs> <laughs> because our readers were so not out of touch, but they just did not want any more issues and politics in their face. But they loved the recipes. So we went with our readers. Mm -hmm. And th that's part of staying very close to your marketplace. You do a constant survey and constant questioning and ask them, what do you want? The next big breakthrough we'll probably have will be a page on book reviews. We're, we're attempting to do that now. Mm -hmm. So we're finding things that no one else is doing in the area, uh, no competition, except from big cities. Even that, uh, the New York Times, LA Times, have all cut back on their review of books. Now you can go to the internet and find a lot of things, but still it's nice to sit down in that chair at well, night people love that. and read about oh, a new absolutely. book, and especially if it's about a local author. So mm -hmm. that's some of the things we're looking at. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We're driven by our readers. They um, assemble the paper virtually. They do actually send their stories yes. to one of the editors who, who actually mounts the paper, puts it on, on a, a computer program, and then Ivan gets together and they move things And, and there, there again, without the technology, that would have been impossible. Oh, I right. mean, it I go back to the insane. days before that uh, where you can before you can desktop, as the, as the term is, and that's how you can... I'll go back even off. further. I used to cut and paste. Oh, we did the Do cut that. and paste with mm -hmm. the wax. Yes. We had I, a, I, yeah, I, I, absolutely. Uh, in fact, we had, when I came here, we had a school newspaper, and we did that, and you get that exact old knife and your light table to make sure you got that stuff yes. lined up. And that's prehistoric technology. And I, I tell kids now, and they look at me like, well, that's crazy. They just can't comprehend that yeah. kind of work. And you go back before that, you actually had lead type. Lead type. You had yeah. linotype machines. Yeah. We, we, we didn't get the linotype, but uh, we, we did do the But it's the, the technology is so rapidly advancing in this. And I can see where, well, now where you all are in, in, in the river counties, so-called, uh, 
Not much penetration from the Courier Journal, the Sun, the no. Commercial Appeal of Memphis, any no, of these papers. Uh, uh, less than half a percent of those papers you mentioned. Paducah uh, still has, they, they claim 300 uh, subscribers in Hickman, 200 in Fulton, maybe 500 in Combined Carlisle and Ballard. So it's, it's not that great out of their 25,000 that they print. Uh, so they, they pretty much pull it away from those kind of rural areas. The rack sales are down. They, they, I think we have two machines in our whole county. So we have a market niche that's opening up for us. You do, and you, and you go back to the Courier Journal. Courier Journal for years had a Paducah bureau, yeah. and they yes. closed it yeah. long ago. Yeah, I remember and, when that And, happened. you know, we used to get a, a, there was a Western Kentucky edition, and uh, all of that's changing. So it's not, it's not just Paducah. It's, it's across the country. And I'm not, I'm not real sure that that was a good move, Barry. What's I, that? Can, uh, closing these bureaus. I mean, I'm not sure that they didn't, you know, you either got to sell more and you've got to have more eyeballs um, or you've got to cut, cut costs. And it looks, it looks like to me from the outside that the newspapers went with cut costs only. Yeah. And, and that's, it, it's, and buy real estate, which actually made no sense right. to me whatsoever. Right. Right. This is going to sound rough, but what Mary's talking about and what you're talking about, the collapse of the written newspaper as such, you can almost say, Paducah Sun, Courier Journal, GM Ford. Mm -hmm. Legacy structures over 100 years are so deeply rooted, they can't maneuver at all. They're just struck there. Our society is not collapsing, it's, it's going through a tra transition. This is a 100 year cycle. It happened in 1907, 1906, the same way. When Chicago, uh, uh, no, not San Francisco fire took place in 1906. The bailout in 1907 to bring money into California to build that town bankrupt the country. J.P. Morgan had to write a personal check to pull the, the banks and the government back together. That led to, in, in the 1912, the Federal Reserve being system set up. 1928, we go through another financial crisis. 1968, we have a social crisis, a, a turmoil of, of the Democratic Convention. Kennedy killed, Martin King killed. It was a flashpoint in our society. Come to 2008, it's all rolled in together. We're changing, we're, we're sh sh th sh taking away our skin and putting a new skin there. We're becoming a new Americans. And it's gonna be a painful process for about another two years. It should bottom out in about the third quarter of 2010. And if we don't get into any more wars and, and we can pull this together, you're gonna see a golden decade take place. Americans have been pinned up for so long. They wanna get out and do things, they wanna travel, they wanna shop. But we have to learn how to deal with alternative energies, common sense government, and what Mary's talking about, we got to look at government and say, okay, if it's not working, we need to change it. And all these political dynasties are just like the papers we're talking about. They're all at risk. And uh, we're at risk of running out of time. Actually, right. we, we have run out of time. Thank you all. We'll have to come Thank back and do this again sometime. Uh, th this, is, this is fascinating to me. My guests today were Ivan and Mary Potter, uh, publishers of the Mississippi River Journal, as well as the West Kentucky Journal of Politics and Issues online. I'm Barry Craig. Please join us next time.